Hello, my name is Nils Hulker, and it is my joy and honor to be organist here at St. Clement's Episcopal Church in St. Paul, Minnesota. The cornerstone for St. Clement's was laid in 1894, and the architect was Cass Gilbert. And Cass Gilbert is perhaps better known for some of his larger buildings that include the Minnesota State Capitol here in St. Paul, the Woolworth Tower in New York City, and the United States Supreme Court building in Washington, D.C. Although the cornerstone was laid in 1894, the first pipe organ was not installed here at St. Clement's until 1903. Up until that time, we think they probably used a reed organ, also called a harmonium or a pump organ. That first organ was built by the Austin Organ Company of Hartford, Connecticut. And an interesting fact about that organ is due to the fact that electricity still had not reached this building, that the power for that organ that provided the wind supply was water pressure. So the blower for this organ was connected to the city water main. So it probably will come as little surprise to you as you survey the landscape around me that in January of 1905, that water line froze and the organ fell silent until the water line could be thawed out. That organ was ultimately replaced in 1964 by an organ built by the Aeolian Skinner Company of Boston, Massachusetts. Let me now take you inside. The organ that Aeolian Skinner installed here in 1964 could be described in its tonal conception as an American classic organ. The American classic conception was developed by Englishman G. Donald Harrison. He emigrated to this country and joined the Skinner Organ Company, which eventually became the Aeolian Skinner Organ Company. And he remained its president and tonal director until his death in 1956. This organ represents very well that American classic sound. It is a modest instrument. It's only 27 stops, but I think it demonstrates well how 27 well-designed stops can accomplish a great deal. My own interest in the organ begins before I can remember. I grew up at St. Mark's Cathedral in Minneapolis and was surrounded by great organ music and great choral music. So I don't even remember when I first became interested in the organ. I like to say that my musical formation began when I was six years old as a treble, and I worked my way down to bass in the cathedral choir. There was a particular uh, record, an LP, a vinyl LP, that was particularly influential that I listened to over and over again. And it was made by the music director at St. Mark Cathedral, who was there when I was very young, uh, who was the eminent Canadian organist, composer, conductor, Gerald Bales. And I listened to that recording over and over again. Eventually, I studied organ at St. Mark's with the uh, Gerald Bales' successor, Howard Don Small. And uh, I began taking organ lessons with him when I was about 15 or so. And one of the first places that I played a service as a substitute organist was here at St. Clement's. The then music director, Stanford Lemberg, liked to have Christmas mornings off after all the rigors of Christmas Eve. And so I was his substitute while I was in high school and I played here on Christmas morning. So I have very, very fond associations here with St. Clement's. The piece that I'm going to play for you is my own setting of the hymn tune, St. Clement, the tune that is associated with the hymn, The Day Thou Gavest, Lord, Is Ended. This is a partita on St. Clement, and I wrote it in 2016 for my 10th anniversary as organist here at St. Clement's. And as the partita goes through the various variations on the tune, you will hear many, many different colors um, from this modest instrument. And it goes from the very quietest sounds to full organ. So I do hope you enjoy my partita on St. Clement. <laughs> 